Hey guys, Nick Hewitt here with another video tutorial. Um, this time I'm going to cover why uh, CSS and HTML is so much more powerful than exporting from Photoshop and just exporting your slices. Um, I already did the video and I actually accidentally hit cancel rather than stop so that I'm doing this for the second time uh, but maybe it'll be a little bit better this time. Um, to begin with when you want to export from Photoshop it is, it is a good uh, alternative if you don't know any HTML or CSS. The only problem is you're going to get images where your text is and then you're not going to be able to get the full search engine optimization that you really need. Um, and you're going to get a lot of images that take up time loading when you can really create the same effect using tiled uh, one pixel slices like I have here. Um, with the other videos that I did that's what I did to create this blue background on each the footer and the header and then also this dark gray to black. Um, it just was a tiled thing and it doesn't really take any more time to load anything and HTML and CSS will know okay I gotta tile this and it, it won't it won't affect any load time and it'll be a lot quicker. Um, so if you do want to export uh, for the web you hit or go to file save for web and devices and then from this page you can go through adjust your slices and then hit save and once you hit save you're gonna come down here to save as type and choose HTML and images normally I would do images only um, but for this I'm gonna do HTML and images which I've already done this um, so I'm gonna cancel out of it and then make sure you do all slices so it's gonna grab everything so not just the stuff that you have selected um, if you were to do just the stuff that you had selected it would cause a problem where you'd have missing pieces and so make sure you choose both of those. Um, I'm going to ca cancel out of this, cancel out of this, and I've already put together a basic website, um, one with tables and one with div tags, and I'm going to show you the power that div tags have for layouts over over tables. Um, I'm not saying that tables are bad, I just think there there's a, really a place where tables should be used, and that's for displaying data. Um, but I'll show you a good example of that. Oops. This is my div one. Um, I'll refresh the page. So here, oh, my uh, CSS got messed up. So I'm going to copy this. There we go. So now you can see they both look the same. Um, with this, it's table based. So if I look at the code, and I believe that I have a pretty decent size but I'll increase it one more time. Um, if you look at the code we have our table and I'm not going to get into the actual coding behind it um, but if I were to look at I'm actually going to go back and open my Photoshop web layout HTML file and I'll show you what happens. With this it just creates a website that is just as big as my, my PSD file was. So I can't actually get the stretching effect that I wanted and make it tile the way that I wanted to. Um, that's one drawback with exporting from Photoshop. Uh, the other thing is like I said you're gonna have really long load times which search engines are looking for quick pages and not a whole lot of lag between the time when the person clicks on view the page and then the time when the contest, content's displayed. Um, tables are not really good for layouts just because when you have a table you have to load everything inside the table so the table knows how big to get and then it's displayed so it really has to load everything inside of it and then display the information whereas div tags can load all the individual divs and then they can start populating and it makes it a lot quicker because you don't have to wait for the whole page to get done whereas with tables you do. Um, yes it's not terribly um, a terribly long amount of time between the two but there is a difference and Google and the other search engines seem to take that into more of a more of a factor when they're judging your site and, and looking at what your site looks like um, and doing page ranking and all that stuff. Uh, the other thing that I was going to talk about, I'm going to switch back over to this table layout. So I have my table, but let's say I want to put my menu on the right side. I would have to go in and grab this uh, table data cell. And I don't know if I've already explained it, so I'm going to explain what a table is. Um, table, you basically have your table, which tells HTML to create a table. Then you have your table rows, which are these TR tags. And then within TR tag, you have a TD tag. And each TD tag is really a column in that row. 
Um, and that's really how that works. I'm not going to go much further into it because this is just showing you why you should use CSS and HTML over exporting for Photoshop. Um, but this is just my recommendation. But if I wanted to switch this from the left side to the right side, you're going to notice it's going to cause a problem. So I'm going to select this TD tag. And over here, I have my float, uh, LM, my float designation. Um, I'm going to change that from left to right. Oh, for some reason that worked. That shouldn't be working like that. Hmm. Well, anyways, normally what it should do, and I think it's because it's not, it doesn't have the correct uh, width. I'm gonna add this in. Float right. There we go. That's what it should look like. Um, as you can see, this. Div tag or this TD element should only be as wide as this. This is as far as it should go, which is what's happening. But because it's float right, it's only taking the width of this um, unordered list. So it kind of looks messed up. And you can't actually get it over here. So what you'd have to do is copy and paste this below. And I'm gonna, I'll actually do that. I'm gonna turn this off. Um, go in and edit my, uh, I'll select my table row and hit edit and that'll give me a chance to edit everything inside. So I'm going to copy this and put it below this content. And now it's on the right side. And you'd have to do that for every single page. So if you had a 50 or 100 page website, that gets rather tedious and you don't want to spend the time to do that. Um, so that's one drawback or, or another drawback of using tables. Um, if I go back, if I refresh this page, and like I said, it should really look like this. Oops. There we go. I was grabbing the wrong CSS. It should really look like this. No, oh, well, oh, whatever. Um, so it should look like this page, really. But this is using div tags. And with this one, you can see that I have my header, my menu, my content, and my footer. But if I select my menu div tag and I do flow right, that's all that I have to change and it automatically makes that change for me. The other thing that I wanted to show you which makes div tags much much more powerful is you can designate another CSS style sheet so you have the same basic template, the, base, the same basic HTML but choosing another CSS uh, style sheet you can get a completely different effect. I'm going to go in and copy this and paste it in here and you'll see that I have a horizontal menu. And this is where the power of CSS really comes in. You can go ahead and create horizontal menus and you never have to change your HTML. So you could really change the entire way that your website looks just by changing your CSS style sheet. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about was making things reusable. I don't have an example here, but if you, let's say you wanted to create a header and you wanted to reuse that header over and over, but it was in different sizes. You can do different styling or different ways to style things to create different style, uh, different size headers. So let's say you have a menu that has a header on it. You can do one for there, and then you want to use the same thing for a header for um, a page content item or something like that. You could use it, and it would stretch much further. Um, there's pretty much endless options. Um, but I'm probably going to do a much more complex video on CSS just to see, um, just to show you how much more powerful uh, CSS is. So um, go ahead and make sure you stay tuned for that. Um, and I'm going to do a basic HTML website or a basic HTML tutorial. I know there's a couple of people out there who wanted one. Um, I know the couple of students at the college that I work for, um, they all wanted a couple of videos as far as basic stuff because they're just learning that. Um, so I'm going to try and put something like that together in the next week or so. So stay tuned for those things. If there's anything else that I happen to miss that you want me to cover, um, either I'll post a comment well, or I'll respond to a comment, or I'll do a new video if I think that it needs to be done. Um, but hopefully you enjoyed this video, and hopefully you understand why CSS is more powerful than just exporting from Photoshop. But hopefully uh, things are pretty, pretty clear now. But have a good night, guys. Take care.